Thank you for joining us for another episode of Marking the Times. Uh, great to have you with us. We're here in this uh, summer of 2021, and I hope it's uh, a lot cooler where you are than, where, than here in Oklahoma. Um, it's always hot here in the summer, but uh, it's a good time to get outside and uh, play some golf and do some things that I enjoy. So I hope you're enjoying your summer, and I hope you're getting maybe some time away a little bit as well to kind of refresh yourself and sharpen the ax a bit. Um, I want to talk to you today about something that I've been asked about a lot here recently. And I want to just go ahead and tell you this is just kind of a tease because I'm going to probably be giving a lot more information about this in the future. But I just want to mention it because I've received so many questions about this. And it's the whole question of UFOs. Um, UFOs are, are really today, they're, be called, they're being called UAPs. That's kind of the new name for them. Obviously, UFO is an unidentified flying object. A UAP is an unidentified aerial phenomena. That's what they're being called now. But whether it's a UFO or a UAP, um, that's really hit the, the, the mainstream. Uh, you know, that used to be a topic that was kind of on the margins, but now it's come into the mainstream. I mean, it used to be kind of uh, you know, on the fringe a little bit, but um, you know, it kind of used to be more like the Loch Ness Monster or Bigfoot or kind of other paranormal activities. But it, it's now, you talk about UFOs, it's on the, the front page of the New York Times, Washington Post, USA Today. You know, Jimmy Carter, former president, claims to have seen a UFO. Barack Obama has talked about it in late night programs. Uh, Senator Marco Rubio has talked about it a great deal. And the reason I bring it up now is this, this Pentagon report that many people have been waiting for is due to kind of hit uh, any day now to be released. And I'm, I'm looking forward to reading that. You may be looking forward to that as well. But it's been something that's been classified for a long time. And a lot of this information now is going to be released about what people have been seeing. Uh, but there have been uh, about 120 major UFO sightings in the last 20 years in the United States, many of them by Navy pilots. Now, again, this is just a little bit of a tease today, but let me just say this. I got interested in this topic several years ago because my in-laws own a house in uh, Rio Doso, New Mexico. And so when you go from Oklahoma City, where we live, to Rio Doso, you go either through or go right around uh, Roswell, New Mexico. And years ago, before they had a road that went around Roswell, you'd have to go through the town. So we would drive through it. I mean, I've driven through there dozens and dozens of times. And you have the UFO International Museum, you have the UFO Enigma Museum, uh, all kinds of things around Roswell about UFOs, obviously because back in the early part of July in 1947 was kind of the mother of all you know, UFO sightings, alleged crash of a UFO I'm out there about 40 miles north of Rio Doso in the desert. So I became interested in, in UFOs, kind of going through Rio Doso all the time. So I visited um, the International UFO Museum. I visited the UFO Enigma Museum, all the museums there. I'm going to go back there this summer again and uh, do some more research there. I've also been out to the alleged crash site, out to the north of, of town. Um, it's, it's, on a, it's on land owned by a man named Hub Corn. And I went out there and met Hub, and uh, we drove down to this alleged crash site that I had done a lot of reading about. It happened on the weekend of July 4th, July 5th of 1947. And while I was out there at the crash site, and I think this was, this was God's providence, there was a group of people there that were filming a program for uh, an episode for a program called Strange Universe that used to be on back in the 90s, 1990s. And there was a man standing a little ways there off by himself and uh, was probably in his 70s, maybe late 70s, I think, at the time. And so I, he had a, a, a Kansas State ball cap on. So I just went over and kind of engaged him in conversation, and asked him who he was. And he said his name was Frank Kaufman. And I said, well, Mr. Kaufman, what are you doing out here? He said, well, I'm one of the original nine men who came and saw this crash site right after it took place from a, an army base in Rio Doso. And I said, really? And I began to ask him, and he explained to me what he found there, what he saw. We talked for about an hour. Well, I found out since that time that he's one of the main witnesses to all of what took place. And I won't tell you now, you can get online, you can look at a lot of the information he's given about what he told me, but it was fascinating. And that's when I became a believer that something is happening. Up to that time, I thought, you know, this is just, these things are hoaxes or they're just, you can explain it naturally or it's kind of, again, like Bigfoot. People talk about it all the time, but never find them. But 
now in recent years with all these Navy pilots, you know, they're, they're seeing uh, device, they're, they're seeing devices or crafts that plunge into the water at high speeds and then come back out of the water. They go at incredible rates of speed and have no evidence of any form of propulsion. You know, they fly at, at you know, high speeds and make right angles. And so people are wondering what is going on. And as I said, you know, politicians, uh, people in the Army, Pentagon, Navy pilots, people have an idea that something is happening that we can't understand. You know, people will say, well, they're extraterrestrials. Um, people will say, you know, we just don't know what they are. But just to kind of, again, give a tease here, my view is about 90 to 95 percent of UFOs or UAPs, whatever you want to call them, are explainable naturally. You know, people see a satellite, they see something at night, um, you know, maybe someone's intoxicated or whatever. Um, a lot of it is explainable, but there's about five to 10% of these sightings that are not naturally explainable. They're not hoaxes, they're not natural phenomena. So my view is, is that these are demonic and, and that it's a, an attempt to deceive people today, get people focused on extraterrestrials, on life on other planets, to create fear, to create hysteria. Um, we know the only created life, the only created intelligent life are angels and human beings. Uh, God himself is an eternal being, but he's created angels and humans. And if humans aren't doing this, then it has to be angels. And good angels wouldn't do this, or unfallen angels, because they're not in the business of deceiving uh, human beings. But it could very well be demonic or be fallen angels. And it's interesting, we're seeing this begin to kind of crescendo in these times in which we live and began in 1947, around the same time that Israel becomes a nation, kind of the super sign of the end times. So you see kind of all of this kind of converging together. So I'll talk more about this later. I want to read the report, and um, I'll probably do several more marking the times talking about all of this and maybe tell you some more about my visits to, uh, to uh, Roswell and the things, the things I've uncovered there. Uh, but anyway, I thought that would just be a little bit of an answer for some who've been asking me about this. I hope that's helpful, um, at least at this point. But we'll look forward to reading that report and getting back with you with some more information. Well, thank you again for joining us. As always, I appreciate it. Hope you have a great week. God bless you.